Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very important election in Texas that I think will tell us a lot about the 2022 midterms no matter how it goes. Before we get into this though, I do want to uh, briefly announce, you know, not announce, but readdress the changes in case you missed them. So again, you, you might notice the minor name change. It's now, it's it's no longer unbiased election predictions. It's now also unbiased election predictions and history. And no, that's not going to be the permanent name of the channel. It's kind of a placeholder until I think of something good. Uh, it might be something as basic as elections in history. It might be something a bit more fun if someone suggests something in the comments. I've gotten some suggestions that are good. Um, uh, but yeah, so it, if you have a name for a channel based around elections in history, you are more than welcome to uh, uh, comment down below what you think the channel uh, name should be. And again, if I do end up using your name for the entire channel, you will get a shout out in the description of every video in the future. Um, but so uh, yeah, so um, that is it for the channel itself. Uh, I'm also launching a podcast. It's going to be at PM Podcast 2022 on Twitter. You can follow that. So far, it only has like 25 followers. But I launched the account like two days ago. So go follow that on Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter. My personal account is at Ryan Jakubowski. Uh, yes, I did do a name reveal. I didn't really want to do a name reveal, uh, but then I decided, you know, I might as well. Like, I don't have anything else on the internet for me. At least I don't think. Um, and so, me really, my name doesn't really give you too much. So, no, if if you try to dox me, I guess you 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 know my name now, but uh, you can't really do much with it. So, haha. But um, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter, both the podcast at PM Podcast Twenty Twenty Two and my Twitter account at Ryan Jakubowski. I'll link it in the description because my last name is uh, very Polish, and some people might not be able to spell it. I I also everyone mispronounces it, but you know that's okay. Um, but yeah. You can do that. Uh, I will link the podcast in the description. It'll be on up, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spe uh, Substack. Not Speak. It's not. I don't think that's an app. Substack, uh, YouTube, and Sounder. So it'll be on quite a few platforms. I hope you will be able to access. I mean, if it's on YouTube, you definitely should be able to. But if you want to listen to your podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you do you. I'm working on Google Podcasts. I don't really know how Google Podcasts work. I think I mentioned this. I have an iPhone. I have never used any Google products on, like, mobile devices or for listening to podcasts, so I haven't been able to figure that one out yet. Probably won't happen, but if it does, I'll uh, keep you posted on that. Uh, but, yeah, you uh, follow the podcast on Twitter. Go when it comes out, which will be within this week. Fingers crossed nothing goes wrong in that department. It looks like it'll be within this week. Uh, you can listen to the first episode. I will be sure to post on the community tab. And also, I'm doing a Q&A later. I was going to do it, like... Uh, this week, but then I was like, you know what? I'm lazy. I don't want to edit a Q and A. I want to launch my podcast and be, you know, have fun with my life. And you know, you only live once. I'm not gonna live up to a promise I made like four months ago for a Q and A. And I'll just do it later and postpone it, or I, I guess end my and procrastinate. But I didn't really. I think I only posted it on Twitter. Uh, so if you follow me on Twitter, you'll probably reply to that tweet. But uh, yeah, that's. I've been talking for two minutes now. We're just gonna get into the video. But if you have any questions, I know I'm not a very good explainer. Feel free to um, go ask me in the comments or DM me on whatever social media you want. But the bottom line is podcast being launched. I'll put a link to that. Um, Twitter, I, I renamed it. The account won't fundamentally change, but I just renamed the account and the, this new handle. So it's not strictly the channel. It's also me. So, uh, yeah. Now, this election, uh, this is a very, very interesting election. And I say that for a couple of reasons. I'm looking for my... Uh, notes document that, oh, here it is. So, um, th this election is very, very, uh, interesting because it'll tell us a lot about the 2022 midterms. So, first of all, uh, the background is, this is Texas 34th Congressional District. It did get redistricted a little bit. It's, it's now a bit smaller, a bit less ugly. It's still pretty ugly. It's, it, it's not as ugly as it is now. Uh, but the, the, the interesting thing about this is that it's going to be held under the, uh, current, uh, lines, meaning this is the district to look like when the election is held. Uh, now, you you may be asking when's the election be held. We don't know yet. It's going to probably be in June or July, maybe August, but I'd have to, uh, July is probably the best bet for now. It'll be somewhere in the summer. Um, but yeah, and so the reason that this seat is going to be uh, weird is because so Fia Monvea, who was the Democrat there, uh, announced he was going to be vacating the seat just ASAP. Uh, he, he dipped, as the kids say. And so, um, the, uh, the reason that this is bad for Democrats especially, and, you know, it's it's never great when your incumbent leaves, especially when he's in a seat that's fairly competitive. Uh, 
the reason this is bad for Democrats is because this is quite literally a house seat on rent. It, like, let's say that I am Joe Smith, a Democrat from this district, and I run for this election, and I win the special election. Awesome. I get to have a victory party and, you know, calm the nerves of nervous Democrats for the night, right? Uh, and so I can win that election, and I can go and take this House seat, and I can hold it for five to seven months, depending on how long, uh, you know, how, um, how soon the election is held. So if I'm elected in July, I quite literally get six months of... Uh, being in Congress, because in November, uh, another Democrat, uh, Vincente Gonzalez, is going to run, and he's actually much more well-known than whatever, whoever the Democrats are going to put up. Um, he's the congressman for the 15th district, which is right over here. His district was formerly, and I can actually pull this up right here, uh, his district was formerly a, a, a blue district. He, uh, Gonzalez, won re-election right here by about 3%, so it was fairly close, but it was, you know, it it was still a Biden district, and he got redistricted and put it into a Trump district, and he was like, I don't want to run in a competitive district, and so uh, he uh, moved to the 34th because Veo was going to retire at the end of the year anyways, but Veo retired now, and so Gonzalez is going gonna, is gonna to hold this seat for another few months before the election where he'll go, we've went over to this district, running this district in November, and he, he'll probably win because the district will have been redistricted by then, it'll be a Biden plus 16 seat, so it will be a you know quite the a Democratic seat that uh, Gonzalez will probably win. Uh, not not right, Gonzalez. Vincent and Gonzalez. I, I just realized that was on the screen. A d different Gonzalez. But yeah. So, but for now though, it's it's in a it's in its older format. Remember, this is a seat. This seat right here was Biden plus four. The new seat's gonna be about Biden plus fifteen. So this is a much more conservative seat, and it's gonna be a seat that is not particularly, uh, you know is not particularly appealing for, for a Democrat to run because it's a seat on rent. They'll only be able to be in it for six months, and it's not a favorable race to be in. So you don't want to be a Democrat who can run uh, likely, you know, not likely, but have a good possibility of losing uh, only to, you know, and if you when you're there for six months before getting booted up by another more well-known Democrat. And so th that's why the Democrats are going to have a major, a major recruiting problem for this uh, race. And so the Republican Party does not really have that same problem because, yeah, you know, the Republicans would not be favored in November. They might be favored now because uh, this seat's more, uh, quite literally 11% more Republican now than it will be in November. But uh, the GOP will at least, be, you know, say, okay, Myra Flores is our candidate. Uh, we're going to run her in this race. Uh, hopefully she wins you know, the election in the summer. Then hopefully she wins re-election in November, right? Because she'll, she, she, you know, she'll have the incumbency advantage. She'll have some stuff going for her, right? Hopefully she wins that election. And then uh, she'll do that, right? And she might be able to win re-election as an incumbent. Whereas if you're a Democrat, you're going to be losing no matter what in November. And so um, the, that's basically why the GOP is having a better uh, time with this race than Democrats are, especially with recruiting. Uh, and so just so you can get a feel of the partisanship for this district, I guess, uh, I, I, I can't pull it up on DRA right now, but um, this district is, you know, it's a bacon mander. It's a majority Hispanic seat. I think it's 84% Hispanic. It's very Hispanic. Um, and it goes from the outskirts of um, McAllen, which is right here, which is in Hidalgo County, which is a very big county. It's, you know, it, 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 it's the Brownsville, McAllen outskirts. Up, you, you're heading up here, heading up here into the more light blue counties like Kennedy and Kleberg. Uh, right, up, right outside Corpus Christi, and then you're going up to these redder rural areas that don't have a ton of people but still will vote Republican. And so uh, that's basically what the district looks like. Now, in terms of partisanship, uh, I think I mentioned this. Biden went up by about four. So uh, Fia Monvea was a pretty good incumbent. He won this race by 14%. Uh, and so as you can see, he was able to run ahead of Biden. And that's partially because Biden did atrociously with – is that even a word? Atrociously? I'll just say poorly. He did very poorly with Hispanics. Um, and – his uh, his Democrats that ran alongside him, like H Hager in the Senate race, they are uh, in the congressional race. Uh, people like Cuellar, people like uh, Vincente Gonzalez, who represent these seats. Uh, these uh, Democrats ran ahead of him, and so uh, they uh, is now now that he's gone, the Democrats are staring down a barrel of, okay, we've got a Biden plus four seat. 
either this goes well for us, we can overperform Biden, and we, you know we're like, oh my god, okay, you know the you know the Democrats still have a fundamental problem with Hispanic, but it was more of a Biden thing than a Democrat thing. But if the Democrats lose this race or they you know match Biden's margin and narrowly win, they still have a big Hispanic problem and a problem that's not going to go away. So I'm actually going to read you uh, some of the uh, margins for this race since Vea's been running for re-election because, you know, Vea, uh, he, he first ran in 2012. He won by, like, I, what, I think 20-something percent. He won pretty easily. Uh, and then in 2014, he ran for his first re-election. And so I'm going to read out uh, how well he did relative to the national partisanship of the country, Okay. So that means if the environment is even and Vea won by 20, it would have been D plus 20. If the environment was, you know, GOP environment by 5 Vea, and, and Vea won by 20, he would have outperformed the environment by 25, right? Does that make sense? Like if you're a Democrat, you're, you know, outrunning the environment by X amount or running behind the environment by X amount. So in 2014, he did 28% better than the environment as a whole. In 2016, he did 26% better than the environment as a whole. In 2018, he did 12% better than, than, the, than the environment as a whole. So that's a 14% drop. In 2020, he did just over 10% better than the environment as a whole. So you might have noticed the big drop, and I think I pointed it out, between 2016 and 2018, where he did 14% worse compared to the environment. And you can say, you know, okay, well, that's true, but in 2018, the, the national environment was like about 7% better for Democrats than 2016, which, yeah, I mean, obviously it's harder to run ahead of your environment when the environment's so good right like you know it's kind of it's it's not the same thing but like um, like the argument is that's like saying that a democrat ran behind obama in 2008 but obama just did really well and so did the democrat like you know that can be true but vea in 2018 still did worse than he did in 2016 and 2016 was a year the democrats didn't even do that well like you know they did well in some places they did poorly in some, some other places but 2018 they did pretty well everywhere and, you know, because it was a blue wave, it was a year the Democrats flipped the House for the first time, you know, in the decade. So, uh, Vea did not, by any means, like, match his 2016 margin. He did way worse, and he did way worse in a year that was way better for his party. So, you know, it makes you think, is it a Vea thing, or is it a Democratic Party thing? And the answer is no, it, it, it's not a Vea thing. Vea's not, a, you know, he's not a scandalous incumbent, he's not a bad incumbent. He, he, he wins, you know, these elections that have been tough for Democrats in, in recent years, and, he, you know... Uh, he's been pretty consistently doing well and running ahead of other Democrats like Obama, Clinton, and Biden. And so it, it, it's not a VEA thing. It's more of a Democratic Party thing because when you see those shifts, they're not only happening in this district with VEA specifically. They're happening in the neighboring 15th district where the Democrats are probably going to lose that race in November. Uh, the 28th district with uh, Henry Cuellar, Jess Cisneros, and whoever the Republicans nominated, I forgot, but they might win that race too because that race – is a um, another majority Hispanic seat that is going to turn away from Democrats and will be competitive this year, despite the fact that four years, like in 2016, this race was not competitive. It was a de- see the Democrats were expected to win by 20 and were winning by 20. So uh, it's not a VEA thing. It, it's not a Biden 2020 only thing. It's a thing Democrats have been doing for the past six years, and, and it, it you know it's to be, to be quite frank, it's been happening quietly, right? You know, we saw in 2018 Democrats did very well with you know working class voters, black voters, suburbanites. Uh, they they made some inroads in rural states. You know they won a governorship in Kansas. They came within I think four percent of winning the South Dakota governor's race. They did very well in you know Senate races in Missouri and North Dakota, right? And look, I get they were incumbents, but Democrats did well in a lot of places. They don't usually do well. And the only place that they underperformed really was with Hispanics. And I mean, even then, it wasn't that big of a deal because you know you know they still won uh, the New Mexico second district. Um, you know, they still won most of the majority of Hispanic seats they're expected to win. So, like, we saw, okay, it's a minor drop in support, but does it really matter? And the answer back then was no, because Democrats picked up seats everywhere, and it slid under the radar. And in 2020, things changed. Democrats uh, stopped, you know, feeling like they were Teflon, and they, you know, started to lose a lot of races that they'd won in 2018. You know, we saw a lot of one-term Democrats, you know, Joe Cunningham, Kendra Horn, uh, Social Torres Small, I I could go on. Uh, I'm forgetting uh, some of their other names. You know, uh, uh, the I'm, I'm I'm thinking of the other Democrats. I'm I sound like an idiot right now. Uh, uh, T.J. Cox. You know, there were a lot of dem. Or there there were a lot of Democrats that held these seats that were competitive. They won 2018. They got unseated in 2020. And so when we see that happening, 
you know, it happened nationwide because in 2020, the Democrats did a lot worse than they did in 2018. I think that's obvious. You know, they didn't do badly, but they did a lot worse. And then with Hispanics, they dropped, like, it was atrocious. The Democrats fell to the levels they hadn't seen since, like, 2004, right? It was awful. Biden could have won Florida if he did as well as Hillary Clinton and Obama with Hispanics. He could have made Texas, I think, within 2% if he got Hillary numbers in the Rio Grande Valley and in, in El Paso and in McAllen. Uh, if he did what, you know, Biden did better than Obama and Hillary in a lot of the areas in the South, but not with Hispanics. And so um, that was what shed light on it, right? People were saying, well, why didn't the Democrats win these House elections in Florida? Like Shalala and today McCrystal Powell. Why didn't they... Uh, when Texas is 23rd district, which um, the, the Democrats thought they had a really good chance of winning before election day, and they ended up losing by about four percent. Like, why didn't they win these races? You know, and so uh, you know the Democrats uh, simply were not uh, meeting their quotas with Hispanics, and they, you know, in 2018 it happened, but no one really cared because Democrats were too too busy celebrating. In 2020, it happened. Democrats were like, oh my God, we almost lost the House because of this. Oh my God, Biden barely won the presidency because of this, right? And so we finally saw this, and the Democratic Party changed. They realized they need to make, that they need to win back Hispanics. And right now, uh, I can tell you that in in summer they're probably not going to try to win this election, but in November they're going to pour a ton of money into these seats in South Texas because they need these seats. It'll be very embarrassing if you know the if the three if the three Rio Grande seats go from all blue to all red in the span of two years. It would be stunning, to be honest. And I'll come out right here and say that as of right now, things could change, but as of right now, for this special election, not November, but for this special election under the current lines, I think Republicans are favored. I think they're going to flip the seat without Vea. I'm like, I got he won by 13. You know, it's it's impressive. But I do not think that this, under any circumstance, that this is a race Democrats should be um, excited or enthusiastic about because this is he's been trying away from them for the past six to eight years. It's uh, Vea was the incumbent, kind of held it off, and now that he's gone, they don't have anyone. They're they're probably going to run a no name, to be honest with you. Like in November, they might win the seat back, and they probably will because it'll get bluer. It'll be like you know, not cheating, but it'll be like you know, kind of this, this will be kind of a practice round for Democrats. And then November, they have, you know they got round two, the real round, and so uh, this seat, I can tell you right now, is going to be very very. Uh, interesting to see how it uh, decides to vote because uh, it's you know it, it could be similar to the twenty twenty uh, the California twenty fifth district election with Christy Smith and, Christy Smith and Mike Garcia or Garcia the Republican flipped off you know flipped that seat from Christy Smith uh, I, I think it'll be similar to that you know we'll see uh, I think a lot of Democrats may maybe heading into this race you know w w with high expectations saying okay we're probably going to win the seat and then they lose it by four or five on election night. So uh, that's it for this video. This video went long. I thought it was going to be 10 minutes. It went for like almost, eight, you know, over 18 now. Uh, and I'll be talking about this in the podcast. So if you enjoyed the video, I'll go into more detail on the podcast. I can only cover so much in these videos. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Share the video with a friend. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a, a fantastic rest of your day.